tricks from a, an open source program office perspective. Um, and let me go through a couple of things. Um, introducing myself, I'm Nitya Ruff. I work at Comcast. How many of you know who Comcast is? <laughs> Quite a few. That's good, because I was curious uh, from a European perspective. You've typically been a very North American-centric company that provides um, media and internet services throughout the United States. But with the integration of Sky TV in uh, the UK, um, we've had more of a footprint now in Europe as well. The other parts of Comcast include things like DreamWorks, NBC Universal, Fandango, and content creation type of uh, companies. So you can imagine um, it's been a very traditional company, and uh, but it's embraced software in a big way over the last 10, 15 years. And with the opening of the OSPO, I'll talk more about how we are measuring ourselves. Um, introducing myself again, <laughs> um, I'm a mother of two daughters. I'm, one is on her way to medical school this year, so I'm very proud of that. The other one is a human rights journalist in New York City. Uh, so very different careers, but incredibly proud of those two uh, young women. Uh, I consider myself more of a pragmatist, so I am not idealistic about any one uh, side. I tend to kind of fall in the middle and, and see what serves the purpose of the business and what serves the purpose of people. I'm passionate about open source and innovation. I've been in open source since 1998 when I started work at Silicon Graphics and worked with the likes of Jeremy Allison and Dave McAllister to try to see how companies should work with open source. They, that was the wave of the early companies that were adopting open source in those days. I work a lot in uh, diversity and inclusion, especially for women in tech, because I've, I've, I am a woman in tech and I've been in this business for about 25, 30 years. I understand that. And I've been working uh, on inclusion across tech for all people. Women of color, she, her, uh, that's, that's how I go with uh, my pronouns. And it's important that I add those pronouns. Uh, someone came up to me at the Open Source Summit last year and said, hey, we need to normalize the use of pronouns because people don't use them and they think only you know, some people use them. So all of us should really be using pronouns. So I thought I'd go through a little bit about the history of Comcast in open source. And, and really lead up to how we started the open source program office and why we think open source is such an important part of our journey as a company, especially in serving our customers and being an innovative technology company. And then, you know, I'll talk about a little bit about how we uh, cast ourselves as an OSPO. Every OSPO is different, right? It, it, it serves the business. And each business has different needs. So our OSPO was really custom made for what Comcast needs. Why measure at all, right, as an OSPO? And then uh, what to measure? And then how we went about doing metrics inside the company and some takeaways. So I'm going to build it out because it, it'll take a while to kind of get this all set up. Um, it was actually back in early 2000s, we, like many companies, were beginning our journey for, uh, into digital transformation. So we were actually using a lot of proprietary technologies, basically buying technologies and operating them and implementing them, and highly dependent upon vendors for roadmaps, for the next uh, product that was coming out. And we realized that we needed to be a lot more in control of our own destiny and start innovating ourselves and getting to market uh, through innovation and serving our customers better. So it was around the year 2000 that we started moving from just buying products to actually creating products inside the company through a lot of consumption of open source. Uh, I think most companies start out that way, starting to consume, and then around 2010, and, and yes, it took us a little while to start realizing that another aspect of open source is to give back 
both uh, bug fixes and also innovation that we do or customization we do. And my boss, John Moore, who's the chief uh, software architect, was one of the first ones to give back. And he started contributing to Apache HTTP client. And then uh, some, some milestones I'll talk about. Um, it was around 2013, we really had a good flow of contributions back. So we started the Open Source Advisory Council. And its role was to review and approve contributions back into open source. One of the big projects that we contributed was uh, a content distribution network. So we couldn't find one that we could use at the scale and production level that we needed. So we decided to create our own. And then in 2015, uh, we open sourced it. And then in 2016, we actually joined the Apache Foundation and had this as an incubation project. And another big project that we started and open sourced was the set-top box operating system. So all of the set-top boxes and routers that sit in customer homes is based on Linux and based on Yocto uh, project from a build and tool perspective and is an open source stack that's available uh, through Apache 2.0 licensing. So it was around 2017 that I joined Comcast to start the open source program office. Initially, it was just me. Today, we are about four of us, and I'll, I'll explain a little more about that. And we are now uh, doing almost 164 contributions last year we made. Many of them are brand new individual works that we created. Uh, some of them are con contributions to existing projects, and then we don't even measure the amount of uh, sandbox contributions that we do, which is bug fixes, you know, documentation, etc. And we, uh, so that's kind of a little bit about the history. When we set up the program office, uh, I'll talk more about the functions of the office. We have about four members in the office. It just so happens we're all women, um, so four women office. But we uh, now have uh, a little bit of growth happening this year. We'll be hiring two more people. So that's about 6,000 people in the office serving about 7,000 developers in the company. R rough ratio of about 1,100 people to, right? 1,100 developers to one. Um, it's also a little more complicated because we also advise in and help our brothers and sisters, uh, OSPOs in NBC Universal. Uh, as well as DreamWorks and Fandango. They have their own open source program offices, but we kind of guide them because we are one of the largest OSPOs in, in the company. We have about 200 repos on github.com, which is our contributions and external projects. When we set up the office, our job was to say, our job is to communicate, educate inside the company and outside the company about who open, uh, Comcast is, what we're doing in open source. It's to guide teams in consumption and, and really to um, guide them or to approve and to accelerate the process of contribution. We highly, highly recommend and advocate that uh, teams upstream contribute, give back as much as they can. In fact, this is quite unusual because um, it's a company that, that also values patents and values you know, building a patent portfolio, right? So it's, it's, it's a nice positive tension there. And then um, we, our team and our office works on memberships, uh, advises teams on opportunities to collaborate with other companies like at Chaos uh, Project and at OpenChain and projects of such sort. And we really feel we are cultural ambassadors. We are transforming the culture of the company, especially our developers, to be more open, to be more collaborative, to use open source collaboration. So we do a lot of inner source, or there's a lot of interest in inner source in the company. And then compliance, I, I was saying to my brothers and sisters at the to-do group that compliance is huge. It's, it's a huge part of what we do because we want to uh, really respect the licenses and we want to make sure that we comply with the licenses. So the, the functions of the OSPO clearly uh, decide and, and influence what metrics we have as, as an OSPO. So why do we need to quantify the work? Um, especially in, in a, a business, it becomes extremely important to quantify 
the impact of an OSPO. It's often a new function in the company. People don't understand the function. They don't understand, you know, what value we bring to the company. Are we just a cost center? Do we actually make an impact? So the business impact of OSPO and open source is one of the big elements that we need to measure. And I'll tell you, it's not easy and we are not there yet in terms of showing how do we help the company uh, from a uh, business impact perspective. The second aspect would be, is the OSPO itself being effective? Is, is it delivering value to its developers? Are we uh, doing processes more efficiently? Are we automating things better? And then third would be, uh, how are our projects which we open source, are they healthy? Are we maintaining them? Are we uh, creating value for people who use our projects? And then we also measure uh, how we engage with communities inside and outside the company. How many uh, you know, talks we do, how many meetings we do, how many ambassadors we have, how many events we have sponsored, those kinds of things. So it's really um, around encouraging the culture change, encouraging business impact, and hence the staffing and budgeting of the office, um, making sure that we add value from an effectiveness perspective, making sure that the projects that we open are healthy. So I've, I've really discussed a lot of what we measure in the prior slide, and, and I'll say that um, I'll give you some example of uh, how we measure these things. The OSPO effectiveness, um, the end-to-end -end response to developers when they come to us with a request. And most of the larger requests are, I want to open source this project. You know, how can you help me? So we start with when a JIRA ticket comes in, and then we measure all the way through the pre-meeting that we do with the developer, and then sometimes they have to come in front of an open source advisory council, and then to the point where we actually come back to them and say, your contribution is approved. And we also try to measure from the point of approval to the point that they actually publish uh, on github.com, how much time did we take to help them get their project ready, go through security scans, and uh, actually publish the project. And as you can imagine, we do well on the bug fixes and documentation because those are approved almost instantaneously online. But we do really badly on the open sourcing of whole projects. So we are trying to, this year, reduce our end-to-end -end by 10 to 15 percent. And some of it is out of our control. We have to work with patent attorneys, we have to work with security teams, and work through their queues, and we have to work through CLAs. CLAs cause a tremendous amount of delay, as you can imagine, uh, in all of our projects. And we'd ideally like to get away from CLAs, but we still need to work through the process there. So navigating communities, we get a lot of questions on, hey, I want to join this project, you know, what, what should I do? How should I conduct myself in the project? Uh, what, what are the rules, and rules of engagement? Can someone review this membership agreement? That sort of thing. Um, and we haven't started measuring some of the softer requests. We measure mainly the Open Source Advisory Council requests. Project effectiveness is the other area we measure. And uh, we publish some metrics on our github.io uh, in terms of what are our top projects uh, based on stars and you know downloads, et cetera. But we don't publish nearly the number of uh, metrics that Remy and Twitter uh, you know, publish. I, I, I'm envious. I'd like to get there from an external publication perspective, right? Um, but we do publish uh, a lot of these, and then we uh, work with developers and maintainers. So one of the questions we ask in the Open Source Advisory Council is, have you uh, allocated sufficient time to maintain this project? Do you have your manager's approval to spend time to maintain this project? And we really impress upon them that this is not a dump and run. You've got to maintain the project. You've got to answer questions. You've got to provide documentation. You've got to create a, a, a good community. And uh, so when we, when we see projects are thriving, we try to make a success story out of it in a case study inside the company so that other teams can follow suit. Um, we have one project called Trickster, 
which is really doing a fantastic job. They speed up Prometheus dashboards. They have a very diverse set of contributors worldwide from lots of different companies. They're highly responsive to requests. They have a Twitter account. They have a Slack channel. They really communicate with their uh, communities. We're seeing you know, more stars and downloads. And so we are, we are seeing a, a very healthy community there. And we'd like to see that across all of our projects. Um, the, the other aspect is uh, we do indeed use a lot of open source software, as you can imagine. Every single thing uh, that you can imagine we use. Because we are a very diverse company. And, and to this point, to say about a year or so ago, um, we gave a lot of autonomy to developers. We basically said to them, uh, you can do whatever you need to do to get to market quickly. So we didn't enforce standards, or we didn't try to converge on you know, certain uh, CI, CD pipeline and code, or certain project, um, you know, certain code bases or stacks. Uh, but starting a couple of years ago, the office that I work in, which is like the CTO office at Comcast, it's called the Software Strategy and Transformation Group. We are trying to do more architectural guilds and more working groups to converge on common stacks because it just gets out of control if you have too many uh, you know, stacks in the company. So we help with things like running a census in the company to understand what software we use. We try to understand what top uh, projects we contribute to, what top communities we work in. And that's how the Apache Foundation, for example, we do a ton of consumption of Apache. So we felt it was very important to support the Apache Foundation, both from a monetary support, from a contribution support perspective, and evangelizing uh, the project. And then we do uh, support for OpenStack. We do a lot of support for CNCF, OpenChain, uh, and a number of other projects that we consume. So some, these are some of the newest projects on comcast.github.io. And that's where you'll find three things. You'll find all the projects we've open sourced. And then you'll find open source jobs at Comcast. You'll also find that we do innovation funding, uh, meaning we actually give grants and funds to projects and universities that need money to maintain the projects. And so we've done that uh, a number of times. And you can actually apply for funding. Uh, how many minutes do I have? Uh, we've got eight minutes. Oh, gosh. OK, Project Health. <laughs> project Health, um, it also, right, Project Health also tells us which projects are sick, need to be revived, or killed, or archived, uh, or you need to kind of intervene and tell the developers, you, you either you know, take care of this or else. Uh, so we, we do a ton of that. One of the big areas that's become a part of our job is to work with talent acquisition. All of us are really striving and, and fighting for talent uh, in our companies. And we find that um, if we can do both uh, the proper, I guess, uh, communication of what we do as a company and the culture of the company from a tech perspective, we can uh, afford to, you know, we can really do a lot of good in attracting talent. It's easier, say, for a Microsoft or a Google to attract talent because they're known as tech companies, but we are not known as a tech company. So we have to work harder to communicate that we are a tech culture and that this is a culture for engineers inside the company and that we have you know, progressive open source policies, that we have lab week, we have other things we do which are uh, highly effective for uh, developers to come work in. And then I mentioned that we also measure how we engage with external companies uh, and communities uh, through blogs, through events we attend, through membership, sponsorships. This is highly manual in terms of how we uh, capture these metrics. I, I don't have an automated way to capture these. How did we create these metrics? We really cross collaborated. Uh, we have Lab Week three times a week, three times a year, and we basically stood up a project and said we want to do metrics for OSPO in the company. Is there anyone who wants to come work with us and help us? A bunch of developers joined us, and we kicked off uh, our metrics project. 
And, and the, the team used um, things like Kubernetes and FluentD, uh, as well as uh, stood it up on OpenStack, and uh, used DevStats, Grafana, and Postgres. Um, and this they used, I think some of you may have seen the presentation that was done by Sheila Saibi and Dave Grisanti uh, last year at Open Source Summit and also All Things Open. So I, as you can see, I, I took a bunch of their material. Um, they're very, very proud to work with this team and they're very proud to kind of learn from chaos and uh, hopefully contribute also to chaos. My takeaways is it's very hard to measure the business impact. And most of our companies really are business driven as they should be. The, the purpose of a company is to make money, is to grow revenue, is to make profits. And it's hard for me, it, it's a very long association to show how cost reductions happened or how we were able to attract more people into the company or how we allowed you know, product teams to get to market faster or to create more innovative features, or to you know, uh, do things in a more standard way and create larger ecosystems. So measuring of business impact is still something that I'm struggling with. Uh, if you guys have any ideas on how to measure business impact from your OSPO perspective, I'd be very interested in, in learning them. Uh, rewarding the right behaviors is still very, very uh, dicey. Should we uh, award people for the number of contributions they make? Should we award them for the rank they at, uh, acquire in a, in a project? So if they go from contributor to committer to uh, maintainer, should they uh, you know, get some, um, I guess, uh, recognition in the technical ladder, right? So for instance, people get awarded for patents. They get monies, they get uh, to be on the track for fellow and distinguished engineer, et cetera. So we're trying to create a similar currency, if you will, for open source contributions and open source knowledge. And it's not easy, because it's a softer thing. Patents are very measurable. <laughs> open source sometimes may not be. And then measuring diversity is important. It's extremely important to measure diversity of projects, not just gender and uh, you know, uh, where they come from, but uh, different companies, uh, different uh, parts of the world. So we are trying to uh, make sure that th that's a measure of the health of a project. And then qualitative measurement is just as important as quantitative in my mind. So we measure some sentiment analysis on Twitter. We also look at quotes. We, look, we do a survey uh, a couple of times a year in terms of uh, and capture some of the verbal comments that people make. Uh, we also have a couple of recognition systems in the company. One is called Reflective. So we get a ton of comments about the open source program office there, uh, also on our Slack channel. So we capture some of that sentiment and, and demonstrate that uh, you know, people really like what we're doing, like working in open source. And uh, so we, we kind of combine all of that together. So I, I know it was not a ton of uh, actual metrics that we measure, but I hope you got a sense of our history, why we measure what we measure, and how we do it. And we're very grateful to the chaos community for shining a light on the importance of metrics and for growing this knowledge uh, together. Thank you. <laughs>